This is going to be a quick demo of how to use systemd in spawn to create a lightweight container in Fedora 21. I'm going to go ahead and start the first command since it takes a while and then talk more about systemd in spawn and how it differs from other container stuff you may have used. So the first command um, is a yum command. Uh, fortunately, for, for this whole process, all you need is systemd and yum, which if you're on a Fedora 21 system, you already have. So in this situation, uh, we pass it the install root, which allows yum to install to uh, a location other than the actual host root file system. I disable the, uh, all the repos except for Fedora and updates and install systemd, password, yum, and then the base Fedora release. I also install the standard packages. You don't necessarily have to do that, but um, I like to be able to run uh, standard commands inside the container environment. So I'll start that off. So what systemd in spawn allows you to do is um, run, uh, it's almost a glorified to root, um, if you know what that is. So um, it creates a root, uh, you got a root file system um, for another another operating system. Uh, and systemd in spawn will create a namespace for that environment, uh, basically to root into it and but you get all the benefits of uh, process namespacing and IPC namespacing. And you can even run in an init environment inside the container. Um, so in that way, it looks a lot like a virtual machine, but it shares the kernel with the host operating system, which is what containers are over VMs. Um, but systemd in spawn is kind of a built-in way to do that in a lightweight way. Docker um, is a little bit more heavyweight in that it tries to do uh, the, the network virtualization as well and creates bridges and you have to have port forwarding. Um, you know, if you've got services running inside of it, you got ports and all the network configuration. Systemd in spawn is much simpler on the network side in that it just, by default, uses the host's network. So now that we've got this root uh, directory set up, um, you can see that now uh, this is the base, you know, the root of our container uh, file system hierarchy, and it looks like a normal Fedora operating system. So what we're going to do from here is um, one thing to do is if you take a look at the uh, SE Linux properties, you can see that it. The SE Linux properties that have been applied are like uh, th this is the, the root file system as far as the host is con concerned. But that's not going to be the case. When we go into the containerized environment, these labels are not going to work very well. And you'll get lots of weird uh, denials from within the container environment from SE Linux being enforcing in the host environment. So the first thing to do is to set up a rule that uh, basically labels all files inside the container with the same label. Uh, which effectively disables SE Linux inside the container, but uh, doesn't disable it in the host. And so the container can um, operate, you know, uninhibited inside its own environment, but it can't break out. So here we're going to SE manage uh, fcontext command. We're going to label all of the files in our uh, root, in the root of our container Oops. <clears throat> with svert sandbox file. Um, so this creates the rule, and I don't want to delete it. I want to add it. And then we can do a restore con um, on the root. And now when we do an ls, see, you can see that all the files are now labeled with this uh, svert sandbox file t type, which is um, the label that the de facto label for container files in Fedora. And this basically lets any process talk to the, any, any process operate on those files. Um, it's, and like I said, within the container environment, SE Linux is effectively disabled by this. So the next thing to do is to set the root password in the environment. Um, for that, we're going to use systemd and spawn. Um, with a dash D, and then you, all you do is pass it the path to the root of the container. And this basically is like booting um, a bare metal system with a init equals slash bin slash bash on the kernel command line. It drops you straight into bash, and there's nothing else uh, going on in this environment except for bash. So 
we're inside the container environment now. We can do password, set the root password, and then exit. And you'll get this message that uh, container F21 uh, exited successfully. And that's from systemd in spawn. Uh, understanding that the container environment, that the, that the init process of the container environment has died and now the, the container is closed. So now we can do um, systemd in spawn with an additional dash B flag. This causes it to try to start systemd inside the container. So this is going to boot like a normal system would boot. It's actually going to start a systemd instance inside the container environment. And you'll see what you normally see when you boot a bare metal. Um, all the all the services are starting and everything like that. Because we set the root password, now you can log in and you can see that uh, there are more processes running here, right? All of the system daemons and stuff like that are started up inside um, the container environment. And you can see that this system D here um, has PID one, and that's the init system from the container's point of view. And so if you want to get uh, and from inside this, I mean, you can run uh, yum and things like that, install packages inside the container environment, run services inside the container environment. When you're wanting to exit the, the container environment, uh, power off is the command. You, you don't just exit because that's going to drop you back to the login prompt since you have an init system running now. Um, but power off will take it all the way out. So hopefully this was helpful.